and welcome back to a lighthouse Easter special. Give me a J! Give me an E! What are you doing? I'm celebrating! Give me an S! Give uh, me a U! What are we celebrating? Duh! Give me an S! What do you get? Jesus! He's alive! Whoa, well, when did this happen? Sunday! Give me a J! Give me an E! I'm really confused. I mean, like, last Friday was the worst Friday ever. You know what? Let's all just sing a really happy song because all I want to do is dance and then Kat can explain what's happened. Let's go and sing. Our feet started tapping, our hands started clapping, our body started dancing before the Lord. Our feet started tapping, our hands started clapping, our bodies started dancing before the Lord. Come on and dance with joy in your hearts. Come on and dance with joy in your hearts. Come on and dance with joy in your hearts. Everybody's dancing for the Lord. Our feet started tapping. Start clapping, our body started dancing before the Lord. Our feet started tapping, our hands started clapping, our body started dancing before the Lord. Come on and dance with joy in your hearts. Come on and dance with joy in your hearts. Come on and dance with joy in your hearts. Everybody's dancing for the Lord. When I feel sad. Glad. When I feel low, it's your love, it's your love, it's your love that helps me grow. When I feel sad, it's you that makes me glad. When I feel low, it's your love, it's your love, it's your love that helps me grow. For the Lord. Hi, Cat Sweet from Marlow Lighthouse here. And last time we were together, we were celebrating Christmas. And now, whoop, it's Easter. How did that happen? Now, now for us, the time between Christmas and Easter about three and a half months. For Jesus and his friends, it was about 33 years. So we couldn't wait that long, so we're gonna go with our calendar. So why the connection? Well, Jesus was born and he had a job to do. And basically, we, we don't hear much else. We don't hear much else about Jesus between when he was born at Christmas and then once when he was 12 in the, in the temple and he, he's amazing the Pharisees and the church leaders about what he knows about God. And then all of a sudden he's 30 and he's, he's starting to talk about God and he gets baptised and he starts preaching about the kingdom of God and God's values and what's important. And he's calling out the Pharisees and the church leaders because they're sort of getting in the way between people and God and Jesus is saying no. You need to let people know God because he loves them. And it got to the point where the Pharisees, well, they wanted rid of Jesus, really. And so they, they devised a plan whereby one of Jesus's mates would betray him and they'd come and arrest him when no one else knew. And the Pharisees thought this was their idea. But actually, it was God's idea. And Jesus knew about it all along. And from the very moment he was born, right the way through his life, this was his job. To live and show people what God was like as a human being. And then 
to die. So he was telling the disciples before it happened, I'm going to get arrested, I'm going to get tried, I'm going to die, but do you know what? It's going to be okay. Exactly as Jesus says, you know, it, it, he gets arrested and he gets tried, and then it's the Romans that are executing him. So they, they, use, um, they use something called crucifixion, and it's not very nice. And you, you, you pin somebody to a tree, to, to wood, really. And, and basically, they keep you there and, and, until you die. And Jesus, this happened to him. And it was very public and everybody could see. And there were two guys that were going to be executed alongside him. So they were on crosses as well. And one of them, one of them just kept having a go at Jesus and kept telling him how he'd let everybody down. But the other guy, the other guy got it. The other guy was saying to Jesus, do you know what, I think, you are who you say you are, and, and I, I want you to remember me when you get to heaven. And Jesus says this, he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. How did he know? Well, he knew because of this. Jesus, Jesus died. He, he, the, the Bible says that he, he gave up his spirit and, and that was it. And, and they took him down because he was dead and they proved he was dead medically. They weren't allowed to do any of the... the sort of the, the cleaning or anything like that on pre preparation for burial. So they just, he just went in a tomb and that was it. And then the weekend happened and it was amazing. His friends, well, they went to the tomb that he was buried in to do all the preparations and he wasn't there. And they wondered and they looked around and they couldn't see him and they couldn't believe it because the tomb was empty. And you know who they did find though? Angels. We had them in the Christmas story, didn't we? Angels. And they found angels and they said, what are you doing looking for Jesus in a cemetery, basically, in a, in a graveyard? Graveyards are for dead people. Jesus isn't dead. Jesus is alive. Jesus has risen from the dead. Do you remember he told you? And he's not here because God had actually brought him alive again. And that proved that God, through Jesus, was stronger than death and that's why we celebrate at Easter because Jesus proved that we could be forgiven because he is stronger than death. How cool is that? Wow, I feel happy as well now. Now let's give me them pom-poms. But hang on, hang on. First, we've got Zoe here to make a great craft where we're gonna make a rooster that crowed three times. Don't worry if you don't know why, because we've got cats explain later why that's. Hey guys, it's time to put on your crafty hands because today we're going to be making some paper roosters. So you will need a template, which you can get on Facebook or the website, um, some card, some scissors, make sure you have an adult with you if you need help, and some glue. If you want, you can have googly eyes instead of having the paper eye on the template. So first of all, we need to draw around the circle and okay. cut it out. So yeah. um, here's one that I have earlier. So you can use any colour you want. So you've got yellow, I've got purple. Um, and then you need to draw around your ha both hands and cut them out. So um, we've done these already. So here we go. We've got our hands. Be careful with scissors. Yeah, make sure to be careful. And then you want to get the beak template and cut round um, you can use yellow card or any card you want and make two of these so um, and if you want you can cut out the eye or you can use googly eyes it's like we've got the googly okay. eyes yeah. so now it's time for the gluing so <gasps> first of all we're going to take our hands okay i'm going to pop them down on the paper yep. so like that and then we want to put some glue on our wrists. Not our actual wrists, our paper wrists. <laughs> that would be, be a bit silly if we put it on there. Okay, oh. what's next Zoe? Now you want to take your circle and pop it on both of them and make sure to press hard so that it's properly glued down. You can add some more glue if it does come off. And that's over the hands. Hopefully it doesn't. So, oh, squish that down. And then next, you want to take your beak, okay? And you want to, you can you can stick it on the edge as a closed beak or an open beak or whatever you want. Okay. So let's open that up. Do a part. Oh, 
partly open beak. I'm going to do a closed beak. There we go. Oh, mine's a bit open as well. <laughs> and then um, take your eye of whatever sort. You can peel it. I don't think these peelers or glue it. So let's. And you glue that wherever you want your eye. It could be on its hair if you really want a weird rooster. But we're going to put it in the centre. Lovely. Oh, press hard. Now that. Um, that done, but if you want to add some special features, you can add Ooh, some feathers. Fancy feathers. What colours yeah. are you going to put? I think I'm going to put some orange and yellow. Lovely. I'm going to put some brown and green. So you want to just tuck them in your circle and hands. So, oh. Oh, my, my sticky fingers are catching on them. Go crazy with colours. And there you go. You have your own rooster. That looks great. Here's mine I made earlier. Oh, but that's cool. All, my feathers fell off because, bless me, he's getting old. Oh, he's grown up, has he? He is, he is, and yeah. But I, don't, I think it looks good. I like mine. Oh, okay. Right. Well, we're now going to go over to Kat to explain, if you don't know why, why the rooster is so important in the Easter story today. Cock-a-doodle-doo! cock a doodle doo cock a doodle doo I don't know if you've ever felt really disappointed. I don't know whether something hasn't happened that you were really looking forward to and you totally believed was going to take place and then, and then it didn't. And you felt really let down and, and, and really disappointed. Or it might be that you did something that you knew you shouldn't do and you feel disappointed in you and you're not sure that anyone's going to be able to forgive what you've done. Now, it's a great story, Easter, but you see, Peter, one of Jesus' best friends, he experienced both of these disappointments because he utterly believed that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was going to rescue um, Peter and Jesus' people, um, the, the Israelite people, from all the hardship that was going on. And he, in his head, he kind of had a picture of what that was going to look like. But then it didn't because Jesus was arrested and, and everything that we've talked about happened. So there was, there was this disappointment for Peter. But you see, also, Peter had said to Jesus um, that he, he loved him. And, and Jesus said, look, there's going to be some, some bad stuff happening. I've been telling you for a while now. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be killed. And then I'm going to rise from the dead. And all of you, all of you guys, you're, you're, you're going to give me up. You're going you're gonna to desert me. And Peter had got really animated and he'd said, Jesus, I will never do that. And Jesus said, no, you will. You're all, you're all going to do it. And Peter said, even if all of these people, even if all of them run away and give you up, I'm not going to. I will stick with you, even if it means I die. And Jesus said, Peter, do you know what? Before tomorrow morning, before the cockerel crows, you are going to have said that you don't even know me, not just once, but three times. And Peter was shocked. He couldn't ever imagine himself doing this. But do you know what? He did. Because Jesus and the disciples were in the Garden of Gethsemane and the Roman soldiers came and they arrested him. And it was really scary because Roman soldiers are quite horrible. And everybody ran away. And so they took Jesus down and they took him to a great big building where he was going to be questioned. And everyone else had run away, but Peter, Peter was a little bit secret squirrel. And he, he basically, he'd, he'd like hid, and then he was following along at a distance so nobody could see him and nobody would know that he was involved. And three times, people came up and said, hey, aren't you Jesus's friend? No, 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 no. But you're from the same place, you've got the same accent. No, I'm not his friend. I'm, I'm sure I've seen you with him. Look, I don't know the man. He'd done it. Peter had done what he never thought he would and he was so disappointed. He'd denied Jesus. And then Jesus was tried and it was a false trial because everyone was lying and saying he'd done stuff and he didn't. And then he was crucified and they saw him die and he went to the tomb. And, and, and just there was that disappointment of Peter thinking, I thought this was going to end differently. 
But then Jesus rose from the dead and Peter was one of the people that went to the tomb and found it empty. And, and Jesus then appeared to them. They were all hiding in a room upstairs and Jesus appeared and it was obvious that he was alive and there was this excitement because Jesus is stronger than death. But for Peter, there's still this thing because he did what he said he wouldn't do and he let Jesus down. And so there's still this embarrassment and this shame and this disappointment for Peter in himself. Peter and Jesus come together and, and Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter, Peter says, yes, I do. And Jesus asks him this three times. Now, how many times did Peter deny Jesus? Three. How many times did Jesus ask if Peter loved him? Three. And the reason he was called Peter was because Jesus had changed his name from Simon, which means reed, to Peter, which means rock. And Jesus had said, I'm going to build my church on you. And, and Peter had gone through this thing of, well, I've let him down and he's never going to do that now. But then Jesus, every time that Peter says he loves him, Jesus says, I need you to look after my flock. I need you to look after the, the people that are going to come after me and are, are going to follow me and believe in me. I'm giving you your job back. I'm forgiving you. And for Peter, it was a very practical thing because the forgiveness meant that he was back on track and he could do what God designed him to do. And the fantastic thing is that that's the same for all of us. Because Jesus died and because he rose from the dead and because he's stronger than death and stronger than all the wrong things we've done, we can get back on track with God and be forgiven. And we can be the people who God designed us to be and we can do the job that God's designed us to do. And it might be you're sitting there thinking, I, I don't even know God, has he really got a job for me? God knows you and he's got a plan for your life that was ready for you before you were born. And that plan is available to anyone and everyone because God does not have favourites. He loves you and has the same kind of planning in place for you as he did for Peter. Isn't that amazing?
going to learn a memory verse that shows us just how brilliant Jesus' friendship is. And it's from 1 John 4 verse 11. And it goes, This is how much God loves us, dear friends. And so we must also love each other. So, what do we start with, Zoe? So first of all, we want to go, This is, that is, How much, how much, God, God, loves, loves, Dear friends. Dear, Dear friends. friends. Amazing. Should we go through that? Yeah. You ready? Sorry. That this is how much God loves us. Dear friends. Well done. So what's next? So, 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 so we, we, we must also love, must also must love, love each other. Each other. Brilliant. Right, let's go through that for the whole thing. The whole thing. You ready? Set. Let's go. That, that is, is how much God loves us, dear friends. So we must also love each other. And that's from 1 John 4, verse 11. Do you guys remember last summer when Ellie did the prayer craft? And on oh, Friday with yeah. that. Yeah. And um, it came with a prayer activity. Let's remind ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's go. Hi, Lighthouse. It's Ellie again. I can't believe we're on the last day. I hope you've had a good week. I hope there's been some amazing things that you've learnt, that you've experienced. Hey, maybe even that you've made and prayed. Well, I've got one more opportunity to share with you something about prayer that I love. This morning in Main Stage, you were learning about that boy who gave his lunch to Jesus and that Jesus took it and did an amazing thing, fed thousands of people. Well, there's something precious that Jesus wants us to give him. And it's not our lunch, you'll be pleased to know. It's something a bit different. It's our hearts. So today, for our last prayer and craft, I want to teach you how to make a heart that will help us pray that we would give our real hearts and our friendship and our faith to Jesus so that we could be forever with him here on earth and in heaven too. Would you like to learn how to make it? Let's have a look. Okay. Grab your piece of paper and let's begin. We need actually a square. So grab the top corner, fold it over like we've done before so that we can have the beginnings of our triangle. Okay, then you're gonna grab this side, fold it over and score it nice and neatly. Here we go. And then you'll end up with your rectangle and your triangle. And I'm sorry, rectangle, but today we just don't need you. Then you're gonna fold everything in half so that we've got all the folded lines we need to make our heart. And you can open it out there you go. What you're going to do is you're going to take one side and you're going to fold it into the middle like that. Nice good crease. You're going to take this side and you're going to fold it all the way to the top right in the middle and you'll know where the middle is because of all those folds we've already done. Here we go. There we go. And what you want is to have one long side and one short side. Then this side here, this corner on the long, is gonna end up in the middle over there. So let's do that. And a nice big crease. And the same on this side. Take it from here all the way to the top. And then you're gonna fold it over these two triangles, you're going to fold them down to that pointed line, just like that. 
And again, we've got some brilliant folds that will show us where the middle point is. There we go. Two folds left, one here and one here. You're gonna fold this side in. Nice. Big fold and this side in. There we go. And what are you left with? Is your heart. So have you got your heart? Hopefully it looks something like this. So before I say goodbye, I think it would be great to pray one last time. And I'm gonna ask you to do something a bit strange. I'm gonna ask you to unfold your heart. Because the thing about prayer is that we can do it in lots of different ways, but we can be doing stuff whilst we pray. And sometimes it really helps. Maybe when we're feeling worried, maybe when we're not quite sure what to say. If you remember the week that we've had, right at the beginning, just like Joseph had Jesus with him, we have Jesus with us. And we can talk to him about loads of different things. And if we ever need an idea of what to say, we made a prayer generator. And then we remembered Miriam and the fact that in her heart was stored that truth that we are part of God's family and that made her brave. Then we looked at Jesus and his love and the fact that it brings life, like that amazing life-changing friendship that Zacchaeus had with Jesus. And we looked at Ananias and the fact that we want to be people who are sent by God wherever he has for us. So, that last thing. Jesus wants us to give him our hearts because he's trustworthy, he's going to look after it and together we can do amazing things. So I'm going to pray, but as I pray, I'm going to fold this up just to help my brain remember that this is a gift I give to Jesus. And in return, I get to build a friendship with him. So Jesus, I thank you for Lighthouse. I thank you for the amazing people that have been a part of it. Our leaders, the presenters, but also for those amazing boys and girls out there. I thank you that you love us and that you say we're important and we're precious. And with you, we're powerful. I thank you that no matter how my heart is feeling, you want to be a part of it. You want a friendship with me that would last a whole lifetime. And I thank you that that's true for every single member of Lighthouse. No matter what day of the year it is, whether it's a Lighthouse day or not, I pray that we would remember to give you our heart and keep building a friendship with you that reminds us of all the amazing things that you want to do. Because God, we love you. Amen. I believe that Jesus wants to change the world and he wants to do it with you, just like that little boy who changed the world of those hungry adults. I believe that you're important and precious and when you've with God, you're powerful. So don't forget to keep chatting to him. Let your heart store up the truth of who you are in his family. Don't forget the cross that is powerful and the perfect symbol of love. Don't forget that we want to be people who go where God goes. Sometimes it will be fast and sometimes it will be slow. But if it's in God's direction, it will be good and give your heart to Jesus. He's a person, perfect person to look after it because he loves you and he's gonna be with you every day. I hope you've had a great time praying with me. I have loved praying with you and I will see you soon. Take care, Lighthouse. Bye. Oh, well, that was really lovely. Thank you so much, Ellie. Jesus really does love us, isn't yeah. he? Do you know someone else that Jesus loves? Mark! Ah. Have you actually seen Mark? I haven't seen Mark. Have you seen Mark? No, I haven't seen Mark at all today. Well, I thought Mark came into the building, but I haven't seen Mark No, I definitely didn't. Should we go have a look? Should we have a look where Mark, have a look? Mark is? Mark! Mark. <laughs>
Yes! Hello, it is I, it is Mark. <laughs> um, so I've been told that I need to do a game and the only thing that I could find was this pink bowl. I think it's pink. Some marshmallows. <laughs> uh, some pasta sauce and a big bowl. So ideally I came up with a game where I need to stick my face in a pasta bowl for the pasta and get out as many marshmallows as I can in 30 seconds. And then maybe your challenge is that you could find something equally as disgusting, shove your face in it and see how you get on. Sound good? <laughs> okay, now, do you wanna come and have a look what I'm doing? Come and see this. <laughs> right, I'm gonna shove my face in that. Are you ready? Of course you're ready. I'm not ready. Okay, 30 seconds starts now, go. Oh, it's cold. One. Oh, oh, this is disgusting. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cold. Uh, where are you? <laughs> oh, this is disgusting. How long have I got left? About 10 seconds. Right. 10. Oh, nine. <laughs> Three, two, one. Woo! How did I get on? Ah, right. How did I get on doing that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven! Back to you guys in the studio or wherever you are. I'm gonna go clean my face. <laughs> Thanks, Mark, but you missed a bit. We have some great news. We are planning for Lighthouse to be back and running this summer. Our theme is hope, and we'll see you there. We, we hope. hope. Yes, Lighthouse is back this summer. I'm so excited. I know, it's definitely a reason to celebrate. Yeah. Give me yes. a J. E. Give me an E. Give me an S. Wait, 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 wait. What? I've got an idea. How about we pray first and then we can do a big pom pom hope at the end? Okay, I like that yeah? idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Sounds like a good one. So, does everybody remember the verse that we did in the summer? Let's start our prayer with that, shall we? So, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you but not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Heavenly Father, our hope is in you. We thank you for the past, we trust you for today, and we believe in you for the future. Are you ready to give a big amen, everyone? I'm ready to give a big yeah, amen. Ready? Let's go. Amen. amen! Really good, guys. So, this summer, we're talking about hope. We're talking about H-O-P-E. Do you want to join me? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this summer, we're talking about H O P E. H O P E. Again, H O P E. Do you think it's time for a song now? Yeah, I definitely think it's time for a song. Yeah. That is all from us today. Yeah, see you again soon, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. When life is so confusing I am sure of one thing Got you by my side, yeah When I'm feeling lonely And I start to worry I know God you're near me And you're always by my side, yeah and I can lift my hands up to you I can raise my voice and sing You are who I put all hope in I will trust you in everything There is hope Confusing. Confusing I am sure of 
one thing Got you by my side Yeah When I'm feeling lonely And I start to worry I know God you're near me And you're always by my side Yeah And I can lift my hands up to you can raise my voice and sing You are who I put a hope in I will trust you 